Hi guys, quick and dirty video here. I just wanted to show something kind of interesting. In front of me I have a disk drive. This is a five and a quarter inch disk drive. It's sort of a strange form factor. It's five and a quarter inch size, so you know it's the same size as a typical five and a quarter inch device, but it's half height. But it's actually maybe less than half height. Anyways, it came out of a very interesting computer that I'm I recently acquired and I'm working on kind of restoring. I'll I'll show a video on that in the future. But I just wanted to talk about this drive first. So they are made by Oki Data, from my understanding. There's the part number on there. They're very thin. And uh, let's take the cover off here. Oh, well, actually, first, let me show you how this works. So the front door, you push here, and it pops out. So like that. So there is um, a drive activity light right there, which matches up with a red LED right there. And um, you basically put the disc in till it clicks like that, and you lower the door. Okay, so let me show you with the cover off what this looks like inside. So it has a few interesting features. Um, the head here seems to be driven by this long cylindrical thing. Uh, it uses a solenoid here to load and unload the drive heads. So I'll show you that in a second operating, but this is the solenoid here, kind of lower the head. That's obviously because when you open the disc, it wants to... Actually, I don't really know why that is. Because uh, actually just opening the lever seems to lift the heads anyways, as you can see. But for whatever reason, the heads aren't all the way down right now. It, when the solenoid engages, they actually lower further. And on the underside of the drive, here's the drive motor, which is direct drive. So no belts, that's nice. But look how thin that direct drive motor is, very thin. And this is the underside of that head assembly. You can see the PCB, pretty nice. There's no bodge wires. And um, one other interesting feature is the switches. So instead of normal jumpers, you have a dip switch block. Let me get this in the correct orientation. There we go. Zoom in. So we have the usual drive selects. There it's the switch 2, 3, 4, and 5, DS, those DS ones, and a couple other ones. I don't show, I'm not sure what they do. I haven't looked up the manual yet. But yeah, it's an interesting drive. So part of this video is this computer had two, two of these. This um, thing held two drives, so one of them is out. The one I had taken out had two issues. One is when you open the door, the disc didn't usually pop out. It would open and it would stay in there and I had to use some needle nose to pull it out. So, sorry about that. So that was a bit annoying. Uh, this one worked fine though. The other issue is even with the drive, uh, the disc inserted, the other drive just didn't seem to read it properly. It would just load and unload the heads and just act very strange. So let's take a look at that drive right now. Okay, here's the other drive. It's hooked up to my test bench, which is currently running IMD. And um, I think I have this drive fixed. So first of all, when I open this, the disc pops out now without any issue. What I did is, let's zoom in. See this whole spring mechanism here? Watch if I close the door, you can see how this works. So that lowers down with the latch. And when I open this, the disc pops out. So if I push the disc back in, you see what's happening there? And it pops down like that. And then you lower this. And now the that was lowering the front door. And if I let go, it's going to push that little rod up and it's going to eject the disc again. See? Like that. So that wasn't working. So all I did is I took some lubricant and I just added some inside that track there. See, it's a little bit wet looking now. It just sort of runs along here. There's a spring on the underside. I just sort of got some in there, moved the disc back and forth like this. Now it appears to work very smoothly. So that was one issue. The other issue is the head assembly here. When I started working on the computer, let's turn the computer off. When I started working on the drive, I mean, the head was just in that position right there. And it didn't seem to move. Like I would try to format a disk, nothing, you know, the drive would seek, that would, that head would just sit there. There was no noise, no strangeness. This ribbon cable here, so what happens is 
the head, it's sort of this plastic thing here. And these two gray cables are the read-write heads, but this ribbon cable is actually the drive circuitry for this. So I think what's going on is this is some kind of a linear motor where there are drive electronics inside here and perhaps there are magnets in here. If someone knows a little bit how this works a bit better than me, uh, I'd be interested to hear, but uh, the ribbon loops around here and connects to the PCB. So that's the only connections to this, you know, quote unquote motor. And it was just stuck in the outbound position here. And I wasn't sure if there was maybe a jack screw or something turned in here, so I didn't wanna force anything. But what I did is I connected the other drive and watched it work, turned the computer off, and then I just gave the heads a nudge. There's a little notch right here, to kind of give you a little purchase, and it moved. This one wasn't doing that. So I guess I just used a little more force and I pushed on the head and then it started moving. So it was sort of bound up and you know jammed a little bit. So uh, I just assume probably what happened is just over you know time, this is from a computer that was from 1984 three or 84, you know, I've probably been sitting a very, very long time. So even though it looks really clean, uh, cause it is clean, <laughs> it was inside the machine and the computer was stored in a dry, you know, place, the head's just kind of bound up. So again, what I did, and if you see, it's a little shiny is I just dropped, I held the drive kind of at this angle with the motor down and I dripped one drop of lubricant motor oil on there. And now this moves so, so smoothly. And actually it's smoother than on the other drive. So I probably need to do the same lubrication on the other drive. Now that this works, let me turn the computer on and show you what it looks like while it's accessing. Okay, so it's gonna boot now. This is a boot floppy. It's very quiet. The operation is silent. I mean, I hear the the drive itself spinning, but that motor assembly just glides now. It's gonna finish in a sec, and there it is, the head popped up. So the head's in the up position because the drive's not spinning, and let me just access the drive, D-I-R-A, and you'll see it pop down. And when it's done, it pops up. So interesting that it kind of loads and unloads the heads, is that for protecting the disc? I don't quite know, but it does uh, Does it. Luckily that's working nicely, that mechanism. All right, let's put it through a head cleaning uh, process with IMD. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm operating this on my phone. I don't know what I'm doing. So yeah, that's, uh, there we go. That's, these are interesting floppy drives, Oki data, thin, thin drives. And, uh, I guess if you get one that doesn't seem to be working, uh, clean the heads, uh, and maybe you need to lubricate the head. It should move freely. And you may also need to lubricate this little track here and you'll get yourself a nice working floppy drive. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you found that interesting, um, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and you can comment and put questions down in the comment section below and uh, subscribe for more videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.